Greetings, Wasteland Armor here. Today we're going to have another fun video for you. I've had some comments recently about the M1 Grand for SHTF. So I've decided to go ahead and make a video on it. Um, and I've decided also to include the 1911 pistol. So this is going to be the famous American M1 Grand 1911 World War II combo. So... In regards to the M1 and the 1911, just kind of what we're looking at. So obviously the M1 Grand is a 8-shot semi-automatic 30-06 infantry rifle. And the 1911 is in 45 ACP. They do make them in a multitude of other calibers and configurations. But that's what this one is. And uh, they use 7-round or 8-round 45 auto magazines. So... Pretty basic semi-automatic guns. Um, very famous, though, for their World War II service. So just um, kind of as a combination, what do I think of these guns? Well, these guns are, for starters, really, really, really fun. Uh, both iconic. Uh, as far as what these specific ones are, I'll start on the 1911. It's just an auto ordinance. 1911, this was the commander length, um, 45 ACP, so... Nothing special about this one here, just not vintage or anything like that, but pretty similar to the GI ones, except for a slightly shorter barrel. And it's what I have. And this M1 is actually a Harrington and Richardson manufactured gun. So this one's actually Korean War vintage. Uh, it doesn't have the locking windage knob, but otherwise it's pretty basic uh, M1 Grand. It has a Criterion barrel replacement and also a new stock. I got this gun from the CMP years ago and have used it as a match gun. Um, this particular M1 can shoot about one minute with the right ammunition. So it's this one in particular is a very accurate one. But some of them are not as accurate and we'll go over that a little bit. So for practical use, how did... Um, these guns do. So we'll start mainly with the M1. That'll be the primary focus of the video. The M1 for practical use is a pretty good rifle. The sights are that beautiful fully adjustable peep rear and then a nice post front. Uh, Semi-automatic which at the time was absolutely revolutionary uh, very, one of the very first reliable semi-auto rifles. There had been some before, but they often didn't work very well. 30 out 6 is an awesome cartridge, both just for general use and for prepping. It's powerful, accurate, and relatively easy to find. It is getting a little more expensive, but all things considered, it's not bad. And just... Uh, I like the eight round in blocks that the M1 uses. They're lighter than magazines. They're easy to stuff in pouches like Mos Nagant pouches that you can get for pretty much a dime a dozen. Uh, just an easy, very easy gun to load. It took just took me a little bit of instruction to learn how to load it, and then after that, I was good to go. Uh, very good rifle for longer ish range. This one I found does good out to about 800 yards, and like I said, I've used it in matches out to pretty far ranges. I've used it to 1,000, but that's really past a stock M1's range abilities. There are um, some match-grade guns that can do it pretty easy, but this one's GI spec, even though it has some new parts. As far as how maybe it would compare to a modern gun... It's, they actually hold their own fairly well. Um, still semi-automatic. The end blocks aren't quite as nice as, say, a 30-round mag on an AR. But they're quite quick to load. And just overall pretty, um, I'd say pretty effective. It's I, almost every bit as good as an M1A, in my opinion. Uh, the magazine might give the M1A a bit of an advantage, but from most accounts I've heard, M1s are slightly more reliable. Uh, just some differences in the geometry. As far as downsides on the M1, I'll just go ahead and get a couple of those out of the way. Uh, the gun's heavy. This one's about 11 pounds. They can range anywhere from about 9 to 12, depending on the wood and just some different things like that. 
but that definitely is heavier than something like an AR or an AK. It's also longer, although it's not crazy long, a 24 inch barrel, so it's about like a typical hunting rifle length, but just kind of feels bulky in the hand. You do have to be careful with the ammo you use. Now, I will say the whole commercial ammo is going to damage these is an overblown claim. The, um, the in-range test had some flaws. They used a very, very mild M2 ball load to test it versus a very hot commercial load. So the off-rod speed was definitely faster. But most 150 to 180 grain commercial ammo is within... Um, either M2 ball or their M1 ball and the armor piercing ammo specs. It may be on the hotter end, but it's still usually within specification. But that um, comes with the caveat. A caveat that is definitely another thing unique to the M1 is you have got to grease and lubricate these guns well. If you don't, very good chance you will bend your op rod. Um, it is absolutely essential. So the gun needs to be well greased and the springs also need to be in good condition. If you have weak springs and a poorly lubricated rifle, yes, absolutely, commercial ammo will probably eventually bend your op rod. If you maintain it properly, probably not. Um, I wouldn't run something like Hornady Super Performance in it unless I absolutely had to though because that stuff is pretty hot. But standard pressure ammo, though, it should be good to go. Just be aware that they are a little bit more ammo sensitive than, say, a bolt action. Uh, one annoying problem I've had with mine that probably Loctite could fix, but the screw likes to back out on the sights, and the sight will loosen up and fall down. Um, I've had it happen in the middle of a couple matches, so that could be a problem. You have to stay on top of tightening that. So in an SHTF scenario, if you're not really thinking about it, that could cause you issues, but not the hardest thing to remedy, just something to be aware of. So the M1s just, they require a little more maintenance than some of the other, either more modern semi-autos or older bolt actions. But as far as overall, I'd say probably on a 1 to 10, I'd give the gun like this probably a 9 out of 10 for SHTF. A little heavy and a little maintenance heavy, but quite reliable. Um, they're not, you won't want to dump them in the mud. They're not quite as good that way as an AK or an AR, but still plenty reliable. Very, very accurate, reasonable rate of fire, and just a good gun overall. Very smooth shooting and easy handling. Uh, and like General Patton said, the greatest battle implement ever devised. And I don't think he was too far off, at least in some ways. As far as the 1911, um, I'm not really a huge pistol guy, so I know that this has been an endless debate, but for an SHTF sidearm, I they're tried and true. The, um, the odd ordinance I have has had a few reliability issues. It's a cheaper one, so I'm still working those out. But even then, it does pretty well. It's accurate, powerful. Uh, it'll You can make it work. And you can definitely do worse. So 1911, I'd just say... Pretty basic gun, powerful, good to go. Um, some people say get a Glock, that might not be a bad idea either, but you do you on that one. So then just kind of to show you how well these work, I'm just going to show you a running gun. And I will say that I figured out my time and accuracy ended up being identical to a run with an AK that I have. So just for kind of comparison sakes, just take a look at On that. Your command. Go!
check that out. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Looks like twenty out of twenty eight. It's not my best run ever, but not my worst. And as you can see, that was, at least for me, a very fast and efficient run. So, I mean, these guns perform great as a duo. Um, just overall, I'd say an excellent combination, kind of a FUD loadout, if you will. But definitely still, these will get the job done. Uh, by World War II standards, this is about as good as you can get without getting into some of the weird guns. And even by modern standards, this is still a good load, at least in my opinion. Well, if you like this type of content, go ahead and like and subscribe, and thank you for watching.